Okay, moving on to question three. Okay. Question three. Okay, 3.1. Okay, so this is one of these like questions that they <laughs> always throw in that is a little bit like left field. But so they're saying without using calculator, that's important, right? So they're wanting you to show that you can actually reason this via logic as opposed to just plugging it into your calculator. Okay, determine the value of these two sums. Okay, so let's just write these two sums out. Okay, 1 over y minus 2 minus the sum of y. Right, okay. So what we have here is we see that both the sums are over the same interval. They're from y equals 3 to 10. Okay, so let's just write out the first couple of terms. So it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus the whole way up to plus 1 over 8. Okay, that's when it equals 10. Let's do this one. All right, so it's going to be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus the whole way up to 1 over 9. Okay, so what we can see here, which is quite important, right, is that all of these guys are going to be cancelled by all of those guys. Okay, so the second seven, uh, is it six terms? Uh, let's just see, 10 minus 3, it'll be the seven terms, right? The seven terms there, okay? Those seven terms will be cancelled by those seven terms, okay? So, all that we're going to be left with, right, is 1 from there, because those are going to cancel, right, minus 1 over 9. So our answer is going to be 8 over 9. You see that, right? So it's handy to just write these things out. You see 1 over 2 cancels 1 over 2, right? Because it's negative. It's subtraction. 1 over 3 cancels over 1 over 3. 1 over 8 is going to cancel over 1 over 8. But there's nothing to cancel. 1 over 9. And then we have 1 over here. Okay. So that is that question. Not too difficult. Actually just have to reason it out. Okay. 3.2. Okay, this is one of those questions where sometimes you look at it and you're like, well, thanks for asking that, but I'm moving on. But we're going to smash it, right? So it says, a steel pavilion at a sports ground comprises of a series of 12 steps, of which the first three are shown in the diagram below. Excuse me, guys. Each step is five meters wide, right? So that's five meters. And it rises one, th one third of a meter. And its, its depth is... Or it's tread, fancy word, is 2 over 3, as shown in the diagram. Okay, so it says the open side, this is this guy here, right? This guy here, of the, pavilion, of the pavilion must be covered with metal sheeting. Calculate the area of the metal sheeting needed to cover both sides. Okay, so we know that this side here is going to be repeated again on that side over here. We just don't see that part. Okay, so let's just focus on the one side. So... I'm just going to draw it because it's a little bit easier to sometimes draw these things, okay? So we know that that's going to be one, right? That's going to be one step. And it's going to be one over three times two over three. So that's basically going to run the whole way along, right? Do you agree with me? The whole way along, the 12 steps, okay? So it'll be 12 of these guys, right? 12 of them. Then there's going to be 11 on top of that, right? But these are still the same dimensions, right? Still 2 over 3 and still 1 over 3. So we see that the area here, if we call that A, the area over here is going to be 2A and the area over here is going to be 3A. The whole way until we get to 12, where it's going to be 12A. Do you see that? Okay. So what we need to do is we need to work out what A is. So A is going to equal 1 over 3 times 2 over 3. We know that because that is the definition of area. So A equals length times breadth, right? So it's going to be 2 over 9. Is it units? Oh, no, it's meters, right? Meters squared. So now what we need to do is we need to make, we need to basically multiply that by or sum it across all of these A's. So it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12. Okay, right? But we have to times this whole thing 
okay, by two, right? And why do we have to times it by two, right? Because we have two sides, right? Because they said it's this side, but remember, we have to repeat it on that side as well, right? So we have to times it by two, right? So the, basically, this is the area of, sorry for the bugs flying around you. I didn't know bugs were so interested in math. Leave us, precious. Okay, area of the metal. Okay, so we've worked out that that's the area of one of those blocks. We've said for one side, we know that it's going to be the area increases with each step, right? And then we're going to times that by two to account for the two sides of the pavilion. So now all we need to do is plug that into our calculator. I seem to have misplaced mine, but I found it again. Okay, so we go two over nine. They didn't say we, didn't, we couldn't use a calculator. Hey, yeah, they said we could use calculator. Okay. Oh, you see, I was typing too fast. The number is making mistakes. Okay, and then we're going to times that by 2. Okay, and that is our answer. So it's 34.67 meters squared. Okay, so this one, like, there's a variety of ways you can do it. You could probably do, I mean, you can see here that this is actually a series, right? It's going up by one each time. You could have done that if you wanted to. I sometimes find that with these ones, it's nice just to reason them out, to be honest. Oh, sorry if I cut that off there. It's sometimes nice just to reason them out. That's what I prefer. It makes more logical sense to me. And generally, you can get to the same answer as long as you explain what you're doing. Okay, so just to remember, we just to um, sort of do a little recall of what we did, okay, or recap of what we did. We did the area of one block. We said as we move upstairs, that area is just multiplied by the stair number, right? Okay, then we said the area, we took A out, and we said then we just used the coefficient of A for each step. We got to 12, we multiplied it by 2 for each side. We got our answer. Do not forget to put your units in, guys. When we're talking about area or volume or currency, our units really make, it gives the question essence, right? It's telling us what it is. If you said 34.67, it's like 34.67 what, okay? You have to say the meter squares because it tells us what we're talking about, okay? So that's the end of question three. Not too difficult, but a really interesting one, actually. Um, let's go on to question four.